In this video of Oracle, we will begin with the new database object that is views. So far, we have done so much with the tables like creating and managing the table, putting the data and retrieving that data with the number of ways. Now here, we will have a look why we should go for the views. So basically, when we store the data in a table, it contains all the information which may or may not be suitable for all kinds of employees. So basically, we can use a view to provide a different view for the different set of users from the same table. That's right, means view will not store any data inside it, but it will just have a select statement and will behave like a virtual table and I can create a number of views for the different number of people. For example, if there is a salary column in my table and I want like a you, an employee can see the details for the other employees but I don't want that they should be able to see the salary of any other employee as it is quite confidential. So I can create a view using my employee table and on that particular basis I can filter all those columns who I don't want to be seen by some other employee. Now when we will create some different users we will not grant the access of a table but we will grant them the access of the view. So that is what we can do means we can provide the restricted access. Similarly if I want like the department 20 employees should be able to see the department 20 employees only. They should not be able to see the employees from some other department. So I can do that as well using the view. As I said it provides the restricted access to the data and basically data is stored in a table. So the copy will be only a single means the data will only be stored in a table it will not be stored in a view. So as soon as you will modify the data in a table the views will show the updated data only. Now since views does not contain the data but if you want you can perform the DML through the view. When I say through the view that means obviously the changes are going to be there in the table only but through the view you can make the changes. But there are so many ifs and buts are there means it's not that easy and simple for updating a table with the view. If I talk about the DML so first of all let's discuss about the delete statement. Yes if you delete some data from the view it will be deleted from the table but when it will not happen I am telling you that means it is a don'ts for delete. So if your subquery as I said earlier your view definition will be having nothing but a select statement. So you can pass any select statement which we have learned so far in this curriculum. If that contains a distinct keyword or any virtual column like ronum then you will not be able to delete the data from the view. Similarly, if you have used any group function or group by clause in your subquery of the view, then again you will not be able to delete any data through the view for the table. If I talk about the update, again those four conditions are still there but one more is here that it should not contain the expression. These are the don'ts. So when I say contains expression, it is a don't. All right. So it should not contain any expression. For example, if I am showing the full name for an employee by concatenating the first name and the last name, then you cannot update this particular column through a view. But the other columns are good to be updated if these uh, conditions are not there. Similarly, as I said, you can filter some of the columns from, uh, which you don't want to show to the users. You should not find those particular columns for the view. So if you have ignored any particular column which has been uh, uh, which is carrying the constraint of not null then you cannot insert any data. These conditions are still the same but if any not null column is excluded from the view definition then in that case you will not be able to perform any DML operation means the insert operation through the view. Now 
these are all the conditions if your view is satisfying all these things then you are good enough to do the insert update and delete with the view but again there should be a situation like I want to validate my view for example if I have created a view for department 20 only that means a department 20 employee will be able to see the employees from department 20 then I will make sure that any DML which is getting performed for example if I am updating the data or inserting a data I will make sure the departments should not be changed or any other department should not be inserted why because that particular view is only for department 20 so I can do that by using the with check option this option will take care of all the things which are there means all the DMLs which you're performing and it will take care like it will uh, restrict the domain means if the domain of a view is department 20 then you cannot violate that if you don't want any DML operation should be happening with the view then you can also go for the with read only adding this particular constraint will not allow any DML operation from a view so let's see practically what all we can do with the views now so let's get started with the implementation of view and here for creating the view again I will use the basic create statement which is a DDL statement in order to create a database object so after create I will use the view which is nothing but an object type as earlier we used to write create table for creating a table now it's create view for creating a view and then after the name of your view that is create view emp view 50 in this example I am creating a view for all the employees who are working in department 50 so that they can check the employees of their own department so uh, create view emp view 50 as and then after after as keyword you can start writing the subquery which is nothing but a select statement whatever we have covered so far in the select statement you can use any kind of uh, query right here so here I'll use a very simple statement like select employee ID first name I'll concatenate the first name with the space and then with the last name in order to get the full employee name in the column make sure whenever you are using any alias in the select statement which you are using for creating a view you must pass the alias because this alias is going to behave as the column name when it's about the view and there must be a column name so emp name is the column name for my view then after let's say some more columns like email salary department id from employees since it's only for department uh, 50 so I'll put a condition like where department ID is equal to 50 so now you can see view is created and in order to get the view what we can do we can simply say select asterisk from EMP view 50 so here you can see I got 45 rows in the output and all are working in department 50 alright and here this EMP name is as the column name which we have passed as the alias now whenever I am doing something in creating a view and later if you want to modify the definition of it you can of course do that just what you need to do is when you are using the create view statement here you can add create or replace so if it is not being created the view with this particular name it will be created if it's already created it will be replaced with the new definition so here what I'll do I'll simply add something more column uh, let's say job ID alright and rest will remain exactly same alright so now when you will query with this particular view you will get one more column so let's do one thing let's uh, modify the width of the columns to a bit so that we can get a, a much clearer output so here I'll use column email 
format a10 and the same for EMP name let's put it a25 I think that should be enough and let's execute this statement select statement again and yes it's much clear all are in the same row so it's employee ID employee name email salary job ID and department ID that we have found from this view now onwards whenever I want my employees to access some data rather than allowing the access on a particular table we will give them the access on this particular view basically it will never contain anything inside it it will just contain the query which we have used to create this particular view and uh, whenever you will make a query before getting the data from this view the data from the table will be retrieved means the subquery will be executed which is stored in this its definition and according to that we will find the data from this so if I want to get the details of the definition of when I have already created a view we can do that as well so for doing that we have a data dictionary here with the name user underscore views so let's see what are all there inside it so here you can see one is the view name and another column here is the text so if I'll say select text from user underscore views where view underscore name is equal to EMP view 50 so here inside you can see since because of the width of the column is a concern you cannot get the complete data but here you can see like the com uh, exact same query that is employee ID first name last name as EMP name email salary job ID and that is what we have done while creating the view so when I'm actually making a request with this particular view first of all this query will get executed and whatever will come from this query again we will pass a select statement for getting the data from this particular output so this is how a view actually works now if you want you can put some joins or group by group functions also in this subquery that will make it either simple or complex join as the view which we have created we haven't put anything like that it's a quite simple join you can go for the DML but there's a big question mark when you are making a complex join like whether you can perform the DMLs or not like we have already discussed about the uh, conditions the don'ts when we don't when we can't do any particular DML operation like delete or update or insert like in this particular uh, view which we have created that is the EMP view 50 there is nothing like a group function or a group by clause or a distinct keyword so we are good enough to perform a deletion from this view so like here let's uh, find out some data and if I want to delete the 185 employee ID 185 from this particular view I can do that so let's try delete from EMP view 50 where e employee ID is equal to 185 so you can see one row got deleted and if I'll search it again I will not get that 185 in the list similarly if I want to update the f any field I can do that as well for example employee 199 is earning 2600 if I want I can update the salary as well like update EMP view 50 set salary is equal to 2800 where employee ID is equal to 199 so you can see one row updated and again if I'll retrieve you can see it's being changed to 2800 so similarly you can perform the delete and update operation but in this particular view in the field called EMP name I have used an expression and as we have already discussed if we have used expression we cannot in we cannot update that particular field so if I will again execute a uh, update statement for the EMP name field for example set EMP name 
is equal to Anadi Sharma where employee ID is 199 so I just wanted to change the name here so when I'll execute this statement you can see it's a virtual column which we have passed a virtual column means it's actually not a column in the table but we have created an expression we have given an alias and then this is formed so it will be incompatible with the table to update this particular field because whatever the changes you will make finally it will be there in the table now let's go for insert also since we have used the expressions here we are not good enough to put any data in this particular view but if you have not used any expression and you have included all the not null columns in the view make sure that you can also insert the data from the view in the table now let's consider one more scenario like if I want to update the department of this particular employee that is if I want to convert uh, if I want to change the department from 50 to some other thing so let's see whether we can do that or not so for that I'll again use an update statement set department ID is equal to 60 where employee ID is 199 so I want to change the department of Douglas Grant from 50 to 60 so let's see whether it can happen or not it's saying one row updated and now if I'll select it from the department I cannot see 199 why because the department of 199 is being changed from 50 to 60 so now if you will check the department will be changed to 60 that's why it is not coming here now the thing is that that you may feel awkward if we cannot access others department if we cannot see the records from the other departments how can we add an employee to other department using this view so that's what I was talking about when we'll, while discussing the with check option so here what I'll do I'll again use the create or replace statement so let's uh, find out let's it, it would be there in the history yeah create or replace view EMP view 50 as select all those columns from employees where department ID is equal to 50 and after that I will add with check option when you will add with check option you cannot do any such insertions or updations which is violating the condition which you have used for creating the view for creating this view I have old I had only one condition that the department ID should be 50 so even when I'm doing the insertion or updation I'll have to make sure that I'm just putting department 50 but nothing else so you can see view created and now when I, if I'll try to make some updations update EMP view 50 set department ID is equal to 60 where employee ID is equal to 198 means I'm talking about Donald so let's execute it and now he's saying like since it is created with with check option we are unable to do that but if you strictly want to make it a read only view then we can do that by simply putting the with read only rather than with check option so I'm just doing it again and here I'll say with read only and now again it's being created now let's uh, try to do some updations here again like let's say delete from EMP view 50 where employee ID is equal to 198 so you can see it's saying cannot perform a DML operation on the read only view earlier we have seen how can we delete the data from a view but now it's denying as it is a read only view so this is how you can start working with the view in order to make your complex query easy as here whenever I'll uh, just make the select statement with the view this particular statement will be executed internally and which is comparatively more complex than a simple select statement